Hey everybody, it's Gumpla Melly. Welcome back to my channel. Today's my only day off this week, so I wanted to do a little video showing you guys what I use when I paint my kits. I know my setup looks a little weird. There's no table in front of me because, as you guys can see, my table is full of stuff at the moment. You guys can see what I'm currently working on right now. So I'm just gonna be improvising, you know, sitting in front of the camera talking, what tons of normal people do. And before I get started into the goodies of the video, I wanted to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, NewTypeHQ.com. Without these guys, I wouldn't be able to continue making these videos for you guys. So if you want to support my channel and support our local business out in California, make sure that you use my code GUMPLAMELLY for 10% off your total order. Without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so first things first, the most important thing I believe is well, at least in my opinion, is the airbrush. Now, I use the Iwata Eclipse HPCS. I've had this for, I wanna say at least, I've had this for at least seven years. It was a birthday gift to me. And I don't know if I consider this the best airbrush, but it's definitely the best one that I've used. So, uh, I'm not very, informed about all the different kinds of airbrushes but i know badger makes some really good ones mine's a little dirty it's old but uh even after all even after seven years and after several uses this is still my favorite airbrush i did have another one let's see if i can i can find it real quick give me a second this was actually my first airbrush that i bought it was a masters off amazon it's pretty crappy i honestly wouldn't recommend this i would just save up and buy any water i mean i know hobby lobby sells them i don't know if you have one in your town you could use a coupon on them but um yeah this guy wasn't very good so i'm glad that i was able to transition over to the water airbrush there wasn't much control of this when i would spray and it just it just didn't give me good results so overall i don't think that this is worth it now sorry if the video gets a little shaky because I am holding the camera now so I can show you guys my compressor. Now I'm trying to remember where I got this. I think I ordered this off Amazon or I bought this at Harbor uh, Freight Tools which is like a local um, tool shop. Uh, they, they do sell these little air compressors and they also sell airbrushes as well but I don't know if I recommend those because they don't look to be very good quality. But this is actually pretty good. Like I said, this is a no-name, you know, uh, Chinese air compressor. And this is actually my second one. I did have one previous to this one where it was just the single tank. I'll see if I can try to include a picture so you guys can see what I'm talking about. I recommend that you guys pay a little bit more for this dual one because if you just get the single one then what's going to happen is as you're painting it's going to shut off when it gets too hot and that's going to happen really quickly so you're just going to be in the middle of painting and all of a sudden it's just going to stop working and then you just sit there waiting for it to cool down so you can start painting again so i don't really recommend those i recommend these and also they don't those cheap ones don't tend to come with this I have no idea what this is called. Regulator? I don't know. I'm just throwing out a random name. Let's call it regulator for now. Uh, this little contraption thing, you are able to adjust the PCI so you can see how much you're spraying at. So, and I think that this comes with like some kind of like little re pressure release thing. What? Think of a bob. I'm sorry. Like I said, you know, this is what I use. I really don't know how the, the science behind all of this, but you know, I'm just throwing out my opinions here. Um, but this, you can buy this little setup right here and attach it to your compressor. And again, that way you can measure out, measure out. You can adjust with this little knob thingy, how much PSI you wanna be spraying at. I normally spray at anywhere from 20 to 30 PSI. Um, I normally spray anywhere between 20 to 30 PSI depending on what kind of paint I'm using. And then this is the hose that just gets attached to the airbrush right here like that. So that's the compressor. And now for the thing I want, really wanted to show you guys was, oh, this thing is heavy. Get this out of the way. Oh, and this actually does make quite a bit of noise it's not super loud like i live in an apartment and i haven't had any complaints so it's nothing terrible to be concerned about now one thing that you're definitely going to be needing is a spray booth because some of the 
paints that you guys will be using can be somewhat toxic. Now, I used to spray out in the garage when I used to live in a house. And if you guys live in Florida, you guys know how freaking hot it gets over here and humid. Like, humidity is like 99% over here. So that was just a terrible idea. And I would use a special respirator to cover my mouth and nose so I wouldn't breathe, breathe in any of the toxic fumes. But, oh my god, this is a game changer right here. So I now spray indoors. And I use this contraption right here in order to do so. Now I know it looks kind of funky. It's just a box. Pretty tiny, nothing big. You can just see from the size of my hand. Um, and I have small hands, so... Uh, like I said, it's pretty tiny. And so what's, let's see if I can maybe, I'm gonna need both my hands. So hold on a second. Guys. Okay, so like I said, it's like a little suitcase looking box type of thing. And what you're gonna do to open this is it unclips down here. And you unflap this. And this, I have to get this in the camera. So now once you un unroll this out or unflapped it out, you have these little flaps and they're gonna get connected to this piece right here, like this. Everything snaps into place. I need to, hold on, let me zoom out so you guys can see what I'm talking about better. Okay, so. And then the other end snaps into place some technical difficulties with this thing. Okay, so listen, I'm breathing hard because it's so hot in here in this room. I'm not kidding. You see right there? That's where a fan should be, but there's no fan there because my apartment complex is cheap. So your girl has got to suffer just a little bit. Hence why I'm breathing hard, because it's hot. Anyways, so this is what it looks like all snapped together. It kind of got pretty big compared to how it was before. So here's my hand now, and look at everything that opened up. There are some of these units that come with a actual light right in here. This one doesn't, but I am going to order a little LED strip off Amazon so I will be able to have more light when I paint. I think if you got, you can either guys get this version, which is a little bit cheaper, or you can get the one off Amazon that already comes with the LED strip. Now, I believe this, what company made this one? I think this was, was this? Yes, this, this was Masters. Um, here is the information of the model that I have. And there's a switch right in here, and then you, you have the little plug-in unit that you would plug in here and then you attach to the wall because it needs electricity to turn on the fan. It also comes with this little um, little DJ disc thingamabob. Um, I, don't, I don't use it, so but uh, it does come with it. And here is the filter. I believe that I've seen replacements for the filter because of course you're gonna need to replace it after a while of painting. You can already see the area of uh, some of the paint that it's sucked in. Now in terms of functionality, I think it works really well. I, like I said, I, I just used this for the first time last week when I was painting the Leo high grade and I was painting all the way out here and I still couldn't even smell it. Like you don't have to be all the way in here and spraying you. Like I was out here on the edge and I still wasn't able to smell anything. Oh, and I almost forgot. It comes with this giant tube thing with another adapter piece right here that kind of turns into like a little, looks like a little, uh, uh, duck, like a little, kind of looks like a duck mouth. If that makes, you know, I don't know, okay. But it does a little piece that attaches to this. I, I don't know where mine's at. And this is what connects to the back of this little box thing. So that pretty much sums up everything that I use when I want to paint the kit. 
I don't really like to use spray cans just because I think they're expensive and they're hard to use because the climate has to be right and the climate's never right here in Florida because we're so humid. And not only that, uh, you get so much wastage with spray can. So I think it's just better to use a airbrush because you have way more control over what you're painting. But like I said, if you can't afford a airbrush, then you know you can continue using cans. It's just I think before about the airbrush, I was spending, I probably spent more on cans if I just would have saved it and just saved up to buy an airbrush. So now from some of my favorite paints that I use, I pretty much stick to, I pretty much stick to uh, Tamiya. I love Tamiya. Let me show you if you guys don't know the brand I'm talking about. This brand right here, I really like using them. I think they're easy to use. I think they're easy to use and they're affordable and most hobby places sell these. So that's the one that I primarily paint with. I also use Mr. Color as well. I picked these up when I'm in Japan um, and my local hobby store started to carry these. So now they're way more accessible for me but they're another one that I like to use. However, they do require different thinners. So yeah, that's, that's another thing that you guys have to do when you paint is you have to thin the paints. So this is the Mr. Color Level Thinner that I use. And here is the thinner that I use for my Tamiya paints. So you guys gotta thin your paints or it's not gonna come out good. And lastly, I wanted to show you guys this amazing company right here i don't know how to pronounce so i'm not even gonna put its name okay because y'all be making fun of how i pronounce things is this company right here i use them for any kind of metal color that i want to spray you do need to spray gloss black underneath underneath it and then you spray this layer on top but these guys make some of the best metals that you can spray so they have to they have gold copper gun metal i have various different colors by them they're kind of expensive like this one was $8.99 $8 for this bottle but the great thing about this is that they already come pre-thinned so you don't have to thin them now that's great when you're someone like me who's lazy and doesn't like thinning paints this is just directly just pour right into your airbrush and paint which is why I love them anyways that's it for today's video I hope you guys found it useful a little bit like I said I'm not a professional by any means I'm just your novice Gundam builder you know mostly just not build don't paint that often because it does require a lot of work and there's cleanup involved and I just don't have that much time anymore but I do paint on occasions like I think the, the last build that I painted was the high grade Leo which I did record myself painting so I'll eventually put the video together and post it on YouTube so you guys can see that now these are the things that I like to use when I paint you know, you don't need to get all of the things that I mentioned in my video, but again, this is what I like to use when I paint. So if anyone is thinking about, you know, starting, I recommend these items. So it would be a little bit easier to control what's coming out of your airbrush and things like that. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Give me a thumbs up, like, subscribe. Let me know about, let me know down below what else you guys would like me to cover. I'm currently working on the Master Grade dynamy so i'm pretty pumped about that i haven't been able to build too much because work has just been intense lately everybody's sick so they've just been swarming me but um hopefully i'll be able to get more of the build done next week and i'm probably gonna build the next week so stay tuned for that review because i'm definitely gonna be reviewing on my channel and i hope you guys have a great rest of the week see you later you gotta leave let me Get up, get up.